cover. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do this once. I'm gonna do this, uh, uh, you know, twice. And, and then, then you're, you're like, they need to whatever. start picking up that artist, especially, especially like JD Frizen. Like a lot of the times, you just gonna have to go in and just if there's a JD Frizen cover, one of those, it's almost mandatory. You got to pick that up, right? You know, honestly, she catches my eye. Her art really always catches my eye, and I'm always reaching for it, but I never quite go all the way through. I'm like, you know what? It's it's fine. I it's don't the need eyes. that one. It's I the eyes. It. It, anytime you pick up a Jenny Frizen, it's because of the eyes. And it's oh, definitely yeah. something that she mimics from herself. Because Jenny Frizen's got very beautiful eyes. She does. She's got very big, beautiful eyes. And you can totally tell she mimics that in her art. Plus, like her art's super simplistic, but still very, very realistic. It's very mm. beautiful. Her art's really nice, Did, man. Do you know if she um if she colors her work? That I don't colors. know. I don't the know. The colors also are always just like on point, like the brush yeah. strokes. Like, yeah. I, I'm not, not going to pretend to be like some kind of artist, but like they all have the same kind of element to it. And it's just not, I don't want to say gritty, but like it's got that, it looks, it's got a texturized feel to it. Yes. It's you know? okay. It, it not trying, I'm not trying to cut down her art or whoever colors her work, uh, but it's a very beautiful version of crayon. But like very beautiful yeah, because it has that texture, yeah, that, you know, that makes sense. right? Right. It's just yeah. got has like you said, it's got that texture. Crayon definitely has got that certain texture oh, yeah. to it, um, and it's very very beautiful. Oh yeah, dude. It, and her art is also as as um, as beautiful and as articulate as it is. Um, it's also still very minimal because if you notice mm -hmm. that very rarely does she have background and other action. Thing. it's just a pose it's right. posing there's nothing wrong with one that because it's like things, especially with, with catwoman you got one or two cats in the back yeah. or maybe a diamond or something in the back yeah. but it, it works beautifully yeah oh yeah with, with catwoman and i'm sure dc's like no do do a little extra with this <laughs> one and, and you can totally tell but like if she does boom books if she doesn't need the mm -hmm. indie oh no it's just you're just getting the, the you're just getting the character and that's it mm -hmm. <laughs> well let's get everything started so everyone we're going to talk about our top five our top five top three new comic book day picks for may 20 25th 2022 and we're gonna start off with my guest manny so manny do me a favor do us a favor what is the first book that you're gonna be talking about this week for may 25th i'm gonna go in alphabetical order here and uh talk about moon knight first moon knight number 11 moon knight's a good read i'm, I'm actually there with you I'm, I'm consistently reading it myself what do you like about moon knight so i honestly have never read any kind of moon knight before when this run first started i had a friend uh omni city comics carlos he was like you need to pick up Moon Knight. you need to pick it up and i was like fine you know you, he asked me three times all right fine i'll do it you know so i picked it up and i was like damn this this guy is pretty uh like pretty ruthless you know with this with this run and i was like i'll, I'll keep giving it a a chance so i get went to the second third fourth and each book just continued to top the other one um one of the things that i really liked about the volume so far is that it's got this underlying story but each issue works by itself i don't need to know that underlying story it's, it's like a single issue story that, that does connect but it doesn't need to connect right so i really like that about it um and uh, you know watching the show i got more of a fan base for it like i got more insight to it and then i even went and and read like the other like jeff lemire's run and all this other stuff but you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna give the uh the the uh unpopular opinion here jeff lemire's run wasn't as good as i kept hearing it was good oh really Don't get me wrong it was good it's just i guess the hype was was more than what i what it what i was expecting i guess see and for me um like my my interest i'm not going to say my fandom began my interest with moon knight began in the 90s with with this artist back then his name is stephen platt he he just blew up the scene when he did his version of moon knight very over the top it was so so over the top like even rob liefeld had him uh come on board to do a book for him called profit and jake gyllenhaal is actually going to be playing that character um in a movie coming up but that's when moon knight caught my eye but i just didn't want to jump in at that time because stephen platt's run was almost towards the end of that volume so it would not have made sense for me but it sucks because that, those books are worth a pretty penny as time went on i'm like oh you know what's up with moon knight i just felt like a poser going back and getting it like in the middle of the run you know it just didn't feel right to me so when this brand new volume was starting i was like you know what this is this seems like it's a good starting off point i think i know just enough about moon knight for me to start reading and that's what i ended up doing and then i'm a big i shouldn't say i'm a big 
Jeff Lemire fan, but I am a, a fan of Jeff Lemire when I heard he was do what that he did him in that run. I was really interested in that. I wanted to read. It. I think it's only 10 issues, but it's been gone everywhere. And then since the show came out, the vault, the, the, the value just just oh, blew gone. up and I'm like, I can't get this. I'm more I, I, I want the trade. So if I can get the trade somewhere, I would definitely do it. Oh, yeah. And Jeff Lemire, don't even know, I really like his his writing in other things. Uh, it's just this, I don't know, I, the way that it ended, I, I think is, like, to not give you any spoilers or anything, but it's just open-ended. And mm. I like open-ended endings, but I, I like it to be a little bit closer to close than it is, like, hey, it's this open. You can come up with so many different endings that you wanted to, and I'm like, ah, it's not for me, I guess. But this current run, I'm definitely excited for it. Zodiac's maybe going to show up. He's on the cover for it, so... Uh, and Zodiac, we haven't heard from him in a couple of issues. Yeah, so exactly. I didn't see what's going to happen. Hip him and Hunter's Moons. We haven't heard from them in a little bit. Well, oh, let me yeah. go ahead and, yeah, right? Well, let me go ahead and read a little bit about Moon Knight 11. This is written by Jed McKay, arts from Alessandro Capuccio. Moon Knight and his allies race against, against time to save a life, while Zodiac puts in motion his plans for his final strike against the Fist of Khonshu. Trapped in an unwinnable battle, Moon Knight must go to the last person he'd ever want for aid oh snap this is one of those things where he's gonna have to swallow his pride and say i i need your help and they're gonna be like <laughs> okay you know, but you think, will owe me do you think that means like one of his personalities um i think he's gonna reach back and probably um call for hunter's moon because hunter's moon is is though him and and moon knight they have a little bit of a beef they still have the same they have this they still have the, the same mission, mission right yeah, they still have yeah. the same mission you know one's the right hand to conchu the other one's the left hand of conchu so yeah. it's like i don't want to call you but i think it's going to be that so let's see what happens i'm hoping it is hunter's moon that's a great pick man it's a great pick you also you uh i completely forgot alessandro capucci uh, capucci I, I got that wrong I know I got that wrong, but his art is amazing. That's another yeah. thing that keeps me coming back to. It's just like his art is just so sharp. For yes, this. Like it's it's amazing. I, I love it. I like I do like the way he draws both Moon Knight and Hunter's Moon. Like you said, mm -hmm. very sharp corners, very pointy corners, and it looks great with with his penciling. Mm -hmm. I wish that the coloring at Marvel might be, could brighten it up just a little bit, just give it a little bit more contrast. But yeah, you're right. His art, um, Alessandro Capuccio, absolutely fantastic. I'm with you there. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, then let me get into my first pick, and this is this is something that a lot of us waited for, and when it came back, fans of this comic were like, "Okay, this this is awesome," and it's actually a really good point. Uh, I want to say issue twenty one was a great jumping on point for people who didn't know about this book, and you wanted to understand why. Well, something's killing the children. Number twenty one was a great way to introduce a whole new storyline and, and bring back Erica Slaughter and such a, in a. <laughs> It was funny how she came back in almost a very heroic type of way at the very end. It was just like one of those things where all you needed to do was just see her like, hey, what's up? <laughs> you know, and it was great. No, but, yeah. Are you are you reading Something's Killing the Children by any chance? You know, two, two, three weeks ago, you would ask me that. I would have said no, and I'm never going to. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, doing my show with my with my friends, uh, they kept you know they kept saying something's killing children that like two months in a row it was their top pick mm -hmm. they kept giving me crap for it and i was just, you know what fine i'll read it i'll i'll it was just stubbornness i didn't want to read it because when it first came out like the very first issue i remember being in the shop having it in my hand looking at it and just saying this is, looks really cool you know what i have too many books in my pool right now i i'm just gonna put it back it's a five issue mini series anyways so it's like it's not that big of a deal and oh now we're talking about 21 now <laughs> so uh but no i did go back and i reread it, all of it or read it for the first time i read uh -huh. all of it but yeah 21 was really cool um i still maybe it's just stubbornness in the back of my head but like i'm still like i'm not completely on this bandwagon i'm just kind of like hooked onto the bandwagon and I got my rollerblades on, mm -hmm. and I'm following you guys, but I'm not completely on it yet. You know what I mean? No, no, and I, I, I get it. it. It's there were some issues where it was a little slow, um, like the issues like six, seven, and eight. You know, uh, like 13, 14, and fifteen. They were real chill, um, but just the overall story, and it's just, it's, it's not Jessica. Erica's attitude, her, her, her demeanor you know is very it's very dark and it's one of those things that you know i kind of want to know a little bit more about this girl and then you find out with both house of slaughter 
and issues 17 to 20 you you get erica's origin story um and how how unfazed but yet how disturbed she was after her parents died so issue 23 this happens after what happened in issue 22 well duh because it's number 23 right i mean it comes after 22 but at the end of issue number 22 we see erica she gets arrested she's in this small town there's another issue that happened there's another girl that's uh that's being affected there's another monster and erica's just like hey what's uh what's up and uh I, i'm looking forward to reading this like the the, the new run i feel like it, it it started the hype again for me um because the house of slaughter i really didn't care uh issue 17 to 20 i was just like all right it's her origin story but it, it just didn't it didn't impact me as much but 21 22 and 23 starting to pick back up so let me read a little bit about issue number 23 trapped in the county jail erica must use one of her phone calls to contact someone from her past but will they come to aid her oh i wonder who this would be i wonder who do you think she'll be calling jessica i was about to say it feels like she burned all her bridges you know what i mean like she has like no friends anymore it might be jessica um i have a feeling i i, just, I haven't read any of house of slaughter yet I, mm -hmm. i'm getting to that I'll, I'll get it to eventually but i have a feeling aaron's gonna come back somehow they're just not gonna explain it until later it's just gonna be like aaron's here you know because they, they've made him too important they gave him too much of a backstory to just kill him off the way they did. You know what I mean? Oh, you yeah, you need to read. No, hold on. We we kind of know what happened with Aaron. You you, you think he's going to come back to life? That's what that's what you're, that's what you're yeah, telling that's me. That's what I'm saying. So okay, all right, so I'm gonna need you all to right. edit that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, I'm you know what, I'm gonna go read. I'm gonna make a, a point to go read House of Slaughter now. Just to, it's just to House of Slaughter is okay. I'm gonna tell you that now. It's okay. It's not what I thought. Um, I've had my gripes about House of slaughter uh i felt like i the story itself wasn't wasn't what i thought it was gonna i just thought it was gonna be more about the house itself mm -hmm. it's actually aaron's story okay it's uh, it's it's back. aaron's story so you it's one of those things where if you want to know a little bit more about aaron go ahead and read it i thought it was in five, a five issue arc also uh but it, apparently there's an, uh, a new arc that's coming out uh, so we're gonna get a number six i think here pretty soon um I, i'm looking forward to it i'm i'm hoping that that you stay on the bandwagon because it's in my opinion genuinely one of the best yeah. reads out there yeah get closer and closer <laughs> uh, if it's not jessica though i would assume that it's going to be dragon or dragon, dragon like yes dragon. yeah i think it was going to be that one dragon guy that she talked to at the end of 16. Yeah, she um, was very happy with him so you know yeah exactly we'll see what happens all right well let's go ahead and get to your number two pick manny talk to me about your number two pick for may 25th all right so number two if you've been reading radiant black you've been keeping up with the massive verse then you know i'm going to be talking about rogue sun here uh radiant red is also coming out this this uh this week but that one is more of a like a origin story or like a story about radiant red i don't care about her i like rogue son he's completely new he's a child uh well teenager and uh he's just you know he's being a little you know a jerk about mm -hmm. being a hero you know and it, it, so some people it pushes away at first it kind of pushed me away uh but now he's getting closer and closer to like learning everything about his dad so for those who don't know, uh, Rogue Son is about this uh, kid named Dylan, and uh, his father was the Rogue Son. And then in the first issue, basically something happens to him. Now Dylan is the Rogue Son, and he's slowly learning the ropes. In the last issue, what someone seemed to be like a um, an ally, turns out she's not. Mm -hmm. and, and so hopefully we see more of that here that's she basically released another villain towards him and uh that might be the end of him it, this might be the last issue of rogue son who knows no no i i doubt that but <laughs> but you yeah, know i'm excited to see what happens how that's gonna happen and if they're gonna find out uh if this girl it, it, if they're gonna find out um who betrayed them basically because i'm i'm with you one person knows yeah i'm with you um in a sense that this is also on my pull list so i have been reading the radiant black universe and i have my gripes about radiant black the first three issues yeah. were meh to me um the middle issues six seven eight were fantastic it was building towards something and then just the last four issues after that it was kind of like where are we going with this like 
Mitchell sounds mopey. Nathan just wants the fame. You know, they're just trying to do what they can. And, and, and it's, I think it's starting to, the thing with me in the Radiant Black universe is I have hope that it, there's going to be a hitter in there. When, when, um, when the massive crossover happened, super massive, I was looking forward to it and I felt like, Eh, it was all right, but I did gravitate towards Radiant Sun. I thought, like, dude, this guy's actually pretty dope. I'm glad to get to know him a little bit more because I know he's got his book coming out. I think it was just a few weeks later, right after Supermassive. And then the events of of, of uh, Rogue Sun one happened. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Come on. <laughs> yeah. And then now we're starting to get the story of Dylan. And yeah, at first I'm like, I hate this kid. I want to punch him in his face. I don't care if he's in high school. But now it's it's starting to grow on me. This story, uh, Rogue Son, is actually my favorite out of the, you know, I'm going to say four of the four people that we've been introduced to because we have the Radiance, right? But we have Radiant Black and Radiant Red who are the only ones that have their own story. We got Rogue Son. And then we had that that other girl, the, the red or the pink girl. Yeah, uh, in that, Inferno Girl Red. What was her name again? Uh, Inferno Girl in Inferno, Inferno Girl, Inferno girl Red. red. That's yeah, right. Kind of a, a Negasonic Teenage what the shit? That's the coolest name ever. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really was. And it's cool because that her her backstory was pretty cool in the sense that her original comic was a Kickstarter and mm -hmm. Image and the creator that they're like, hey, look, why don't we use her in one of the stories? And if you want, you know, you can go ahead and continue writing her story here on Image. And I think that's what ends up happening. So I am looking forward to reading her story a little bit more. All right, let me read a little bit about Rogue Sun, the number four written by Ryan Parrott, arts from Abel. As Dylan struggles to balance his normal life with his superhero life, a new threat from his father's past menaces New Orleans. Can Dylan finally tap into the power of the Blackfire? Or is Demonica the one enemy Rogue Sun can't stop? Demonica, that's very female-ish. And we were just talking about yeah, a that's... female turned her back on Dylan. Mm -hmm. What is happening here? Blackfire though that's what get that's what uh i heard is i don't know what he, they're talking about there right i, I thought mentioned i thought the power was the power of the rogue sun but now we're talking blackfire i'm wondering if that's like a, a uh, like a deep embedded superpower that comes with the rogue sun um you know you know persona you know or the jewel that he uses to turn into rogue sun um this book out of all of the radiant black super massive universe. this is actually my favorite one and i have really really been enjoying a uh, rogue sun so i'm there with you right there manny uh i, I still love radiant black more but it, it's a good book it rogue sun it's just i think it's such a contrast to what radiant black is it's a contrast to what radiant red is you know like um what i've been telling people is that you know you, you shouldn't miss out this you're still pretty early on on jumping on this new universe because kyle higgins is literally creating a new universe yeah. that i i feel like it might rival like dc universe marvel universe at some point because rogue sun if you didn't know anything about radiant black you're gonna enjoy rogue sun it's fine it's not a big deal kind of like dc where it's like if you don't know anything about superman you can still enjoy the batman titles you know like if you don't know anything about uh avengers you can still enjoy iron man titles you know it, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. This man is making a bold claim to compare yeah. this world to <laughs> Justice League and the Avengers. I, hey, look, he's a fan, and I love it. I love, I love the fandom being that's growing here. Well, you, you're seeing someone's fandom here on this show. I love it. <laughs> crazy, you know, it is crazy. And then, you know, just to kind of just a little bit off topic, uh, have you? Did you read the Bone Orchard Mythos? Yes. All right, the free. That's another universe coming up. You know, yeah. it's, it's just a great time to be alive right now with with yeah. this, and just you're, we're on the ground floor of these new universes. Um, I th and I want to say the Bone Orchard Mythos. I think Gideon Falls is a part of that. So we already have a an introduction to what the Bone Orchard Mythos is. I read the free comic book day one. Man, I really liked it. I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen with that one right there. So uh, another shared universe, Bone o Orchard Mythos. And I think it's supposed to be like a hardcover that comes out in June. I think it's like the whole or like a whole prelude. Something's happening. I'm looking forward to it for sure. Yeah, no, he's going to make like a hardcover for this first one. And then like the next phase, it's going to be like a couple of single issues. And the next phase after that, it's like there's different formats mm -hmm. throughout the whole phases. And that's just for the first three planned out 
books and then he's got more coming like the passageway and there's there's yeah. other books see the, the combination of uh jeff lemire and andrea sorrentino i'm relatively new to collecting comic books i just started again in 2014 and i didn't really get more serious about it until around 2019 and oh, since that's, jumping that's on weird, yeah <laughs> since jumping on um andrea sorrentino and jeff lemire have been my personal favorite combinations my favorite creative teams out of everything that i've been reading um you know i had high hopes for primordial um and it started off strong but it, it ended really wacky I'm, I'm hoping that they can go back and kind of like all right so this is what we're trying to do and just continue on with that story but i think that story is done with outside of that like i'm looking forward to the uh, bone orchard mythos and i actually want to go back and read their run i think they did green arrow or green hornet one of those two together i'm sorry to the fans who know you know exactly what they what, what it is but jeff lemire and andrea sorrentino did to my understanding a fantastic run there so i want to check that out well let me get into my second pick and this this honestly anybody who watches my show should know that this is a straight up no-brainer i've had them on my show several times they've been on with us at the c-list of villains podcast several times they they caused a huge stir at fan expo philly when they came on board and people were there and there was a draw off to see which brother can draw first and to find out that one of the brothers actually can draw was a huge surprise to me because he's co-writer of this series right here let me ask you this manny are you reading we live i am yeah absolutely yes we live is probably my you know the first season is probably my favorite comic within the last five years like the the very one the one story that I, I hold really close to me because I, I fell absolutely in love with the characters, with what, 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 with what went down and how we got an introduction, a brand new introduction to superheroes in such a fantastic way that we haven't seen in comic books. It was it's actually very anime-ish that, mm -hmm. that it's great that DC and Marvel could never repl replicate how these brand new heroes were developed in a comic book world. And the Miranda brothers, Roy and Inaki, came out with full force with season one. And now that we're halfway into season two, I'm talking about We Live Age of the Palladians number three. Are you reading that storyline right now? Yes. And it's, it's kind of going really slow for me right now. But I think in my head, I'm like, I think they're just trying to get all the explanation, everything that needs to be described out of the way so that we can have like the actual the meat of the story, the mm -hmm. enjoyable part, the emotional part, all of that in the third, fourth, fifth uh issues i don't know is this gonna be another only five issues do you know that yes and okay. it's gone it's confirmed that this is only going to be five issues so we're halfway done with this season right here um and inaki and, and, and roy they to my understanding they are working on season three but they're not giving okay. out official okay. yes or no's just yet they, they have what we call an nda phase that a new uh, basically we've had john jang on the show before and and, and we'd ask him you know like you know because john jang used to work with the uh, uh, with uh lucas arts and he did some some um artwork and some panels for them on star wars and on pacific rim and one day we asked john jane we're like hey you know like something about a cover like are, are you doing any covers for this right and his blankest face in the world <laughs> there's just he's like i can't talk about nda stuff you guys were like okay so now we know that's your nda face where he's just blank it, it, it just <laughs> It started this whole thing where, where anytime we ask like a, a guest now, it's like, oh, can you talk to us about this? No, I can't. All right, NDA phase. The guest is just like, hey, I don't even draw. I can't even draw. What yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. I can't. I'm not, I'm not legally able. I'm not legally obliged to mention this. <laughs> so, so it, you know. Um, so when I asked, when we asked, you know, Anaki and, and Roy, it was kind of like an NDA face came up, and, and we're not fully sure if there's a season three but we're pretty sure this is season three um and it, going back to the fan expo there was people who saw roy there was one person who actually has the very first roy miranda sketch on a we live book and i'm like wow. i'm so jealous of that like I, I if i had known that roy knew how to draw so i asked him like hey roy are you coming up with a cover for any of the future we lives guess what 
NDA phase. <laughs> no, I can't draw. I, I can't do that. I don't know. Right. These are hands only tight. <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, uh, you know, uh, you know, can, can we talk? Okay, okay. Uh, you, know, you know, off the record. So they've talked to me, but I can't put it on the record. So I have to keep it off the record. I, I, I too, <laughs> with an NDA phase, am I not allowed to You're say that? Sweet. Wow. Well, let me talk a little bit about We Live Age of the Palladians number three. This is written by both Inaki and Roy Miranda. Arts from Inaki Miranda. A vision from Oracle starts to show its cards. Up in the skies, the storm does not appear to abate, falling upon everybody. Down below, the path to the hero begins to fade at every step. Nesbo sees how the lives that he took under his wings irrevo irrevocably... <laughs> I can never say that word. That slipped through his thing. slipped through his fingers. Hototo and the Re Reconnection team arrive at their mysterious destination. From this point on, everything becomes uncertain territory that feels like moving sand. Meanwhile, Tala and Humbo's journey to Megaopolis 9 has changed direction and hands. Oh snap, what's happening here? Mm. I told, I told the Miranda brothers because out of all of the new palladians besides hatoto the dragon i was like zodiac is my favorite so where i have the card around here I, I i i was like zodiac is my favorite and if zodiac dies i'm breaking up with you too <laughs> i told them that this is it that is the end of our relationship if my boy was zodiac oh right here zodiac i have the card I think that you literally just put the nail in the coffin by saying that though it, like, and then i and then i i, re, I realized i realized as soon as i said i was like shit they're gonna kill him now that's how you feel <laughs> i i'm pretty sure i put it out in the universe but i'm looking uh, forward yeah. to this because it's it's looking again like there is just so much despair like they're fighting an uphill battle like they did mm -hmm. in the first one and, and they're doing it all over again with a whole new set of monsters and a whole new set of journeys and whole new set of missions and, and it feels dreadful like man we're not going to do it so are they going to escape are they going to is are they tempting luck a second time and will the outcome be positive or will it be you know negative and nothing happens and now we're looking at the destruction of their planet which which would be quite chaotic so the only thing that i really want wanted from the beginning of this that we haven't really got was like that whole council at the end of the the first series mm -hmm. like the council that decided you know what let's give them a chance i wanted to see more about them and we just we just haven't gotten it so i'm like man i i, I really feel like we're just getting a whole new book right which is still good and it's still i feel like this three four and five because it is the downhill from here mm -hmm. i think it's going to be more emotional which is what i love from the first one yeah um but that's all i'm missing i really want to see more about that council if zodiac dies i'm breaking up with them i've told i told them that right there <laughs> but yeah you're right i'm with you on the council um did you read the free comic book day version that that, that came out last year yes but I, I read it last year and i haven't touched it again so i may need a refresher so there are there are there were four kids in that one also and they too were on the same journey remember hototo and tala's megaopolis was only one of nine so there's other stories there are other palladians in this world we're just focused in on megaopolis 2 i think is the one that they're at so there's a lot of story there's a lot of world building still left we still need to visit the council we still need to revisit the kids from the last year free comic book day book so there's a lot that inaki and roy have you know have on their hands and and they're building towards it I, i'm gonna have faith i'm gonna have faith because it, it, the team is just them too you know and hopefully that they can hopefully they can get someone else to come in and help and you know fill in the blanks and let them know like hey this is our idea for here and this and we'll see we will see and hopefully this will too be another type of team book very close to what you mentioned with the radiant blacks that it could probably go up against a justice league or an adventures later on down the line um but it's the what ifs in this series that really has me going i'm hearing basically what i'm hearing from you is six seasons in a movie <laughs> got you heard <laughs> no. that'd be cool though we even brought it up like is there gonna be toys oh man oh come on nda face left and right like oh man i can't break these guys <laughs> 
All right, so let's go ahead and talk about our third and final pick for New Comic Book Day on May 25th. We, we're both sharing this one right here. Why don't you go ahead and let everyone know which one we picked there, Manny? All right, we, uh, I think we're both ready for a saga, number 59. Uh, me, personally, I just read Saga this last year. I caught up um, like two weeks before 55 came out. And uh, within those two weeks, I was complaining every single day. I was like, why do I have to wait so long for 55? And all my friends who have read it, they're like, shut up. <laughs> you, you need to shut up. And But no, I, I I was heartbroken. You know, I laughed. Everything, everything, every kind of emotion that you could think of through Saga, I, as you, you probably agree, I had all of that. So I was very excited for it to return. And I feel like with 58 and now 59, it's just starting to pick back up to what those those emotional tugs right uh in the last one we saw uh, what's her name fiona no that's not. no Is alana it, alana alana who's who's the mom F? uh are you thinking about hazel talking about the little girl no hazel for sure i may but just be confusing two books but alana just got done um uh, completing a drug deal you know she's taking care of her kids and stuff like that and Hazel is uh, being finally being like an actual kid, getting jealous of her little kid brother. But what I love about her is that she doesn't really truly act on it. You know, she's just like, you know, it kind of sucks that you're so good at music and I'm not. But you know what? You're still my brother. I love you. I'm not going to take it out on you. Uh, and then this book, uh, I'm not even sure what to expect. I just know I, I'm excited for it. And the cover is amazing. I really like the, the fish, the colorful fish in the black background. And it's funny because the synopsis actually talks about that particular fish. I'm okay. with you in a sense that this is a very emotional book. You, you, you and the, anybody who's read this from day one knows how, how, how attached you are to a lot of these characters. Mm -hmm. I started, I started collecting the comics at 35. However, before that, I did go back and pick up the trades. So I did read everything up until like 36 when I was like, OK, cool, I'm caught up with the trade. Now I know what's going on. Now I can start collecting, collecting them by month. And then the end, what was the end? 54 happens and you're like, that, that can't be the end. That's not no, the, no, no. They've taken away so many characters. But then but then remember, Hazel told us from the very beginning yeah. that that was going to happen. And you just no matter what, you're just like not expecting it. You mean you're expecting it towards the end. And, and I was go ahead. I was going to say it just it gets confirmed in yeah. the, an issue 50, what, 50, 55, six? at least 50, oh, yeah. at the end of 55. Yeah, maybe, yeah like it's just it's you get the confirmation. You're like, no no that's still fake i don't believe it no. yeah yeah if it just like in anything you know just like in, if you don't see a body then it didn't right. happen you know and yeah. uh and uh i think i think what happened at the end of 54 and then when you see at the end of 55 you're like shit confirmed like that has to be confirmed you know but i was one of the people that waited the three years i was like it's three years man like we're in the middle of a pandemic what's going on like you guys should be able to pump these out now no one's leaving no one's houses so yeah. brian k vaughn and fiona fiona staples they were able to literally pick off where they left off in, in such a fantastic way with with saga and one of the more fantastical yet relatable series out there mm -hmm. let me read about saga number 55 again written by brian k vaughn art from fiona staples what the hell does this fish have to do with the people who want Hazel dead? Find out this May as the strangest epic in comics continues. Somehow, still only $2.99. Everyone, look at that. It's a synopsis and an ad all in one. How about that? <laughs> that, that doesn't really tell us anything about what's going to happen other than you have to see the cover for uh, issue 59 to at least get an idea or at least get some kind of direction that brian k vaughn's trying to put us in right mm -hmm. because that fish like you said very vibrant very cool looking looks like a goldfish but it's not gold it's like all colorful and whatnot i, I, I don't know what this book is about but okay. for some reason i'm looking forward to it i wonder if it has something to do with um, that one guy's uh backstory you know we find out in the last issue that this, this newest guy that's joined Hazel and uh, her mom, Alana, has a, a an origin story that he's not proud of. You know, so people are like, you look familiar. He's like, nah, that's not me. You know, that's not me. Yeah. And then yeah. this, this drug dealer guy, he was like, hey, I know who you are. 
I don't care. I'm not gonna say anything. You're my kind of people. But maybe However, maybe yeah. this uh, fish has something to do with that. It's very possible. It's uh-huh. very, very possible because that guy that it, it's one of those things where where that, that guy who's with Alana and Hazel, he's kinda like their bodyguard. He's kinda like their protector mm. but you also can tell that like there's there's something there, there's something fishy uh, yeah, going on with him you know connection. good job maybe <laughs> so we'll see what happens here in issue 55 no matter what i'm looking forward to it this is one of those consistent reads and it is probably one of my top five reads every month whenever i read it it's 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 up there so i'm looking forward to it as well oh yeah for sure <laughs> all right well that's it everyone we just dropped our top three new comic book day picks for may 25th i want to say thank you to my friend manny man thank you so much for joining me on this show i really appreciate your presence here my no, friend thank you for for having me on thanks for the invite i love talking comics so anytime honestly manny do everyone a favor let them know how they can find you on their socials oh man it's a tough question uh, no, I'm kidding. No, uh, at Manny Reads Comics, I'm pretty much uh, everything: Instagram, YouTube, uh, TikTok. Uh, I try to stay uh, on all of those, but yeah, at Manny Reads Comics, and also any streaming podcast, any any uh, platforms for the podcast, I, I also put my stuff there. There you go. And then remember, you guys, I co-host the C-List Villains with AJ, Luke, and Red. New shows come out every Monday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Pacific time on our channel, the C-List Villains podcast. Well, thanks to everyone who watched the show. Thank you to my guest, Manny. Until the next issue. Deuces.